Fountain House was created to relieve the loneliness and stigma that affects so many people who are living with serious mental illnesses like schizophrenia, bipolar disease, and major depression. In 1944, six former psychiatric patients and two volunteers formed a group and called themselves WANA, for we are not alone. They helped each other rebuild lives outside the institution. In 1948, recognizing the need for a place as well as a group, they purchased the building on 47th Street and Fountain House was born. What was true in the 1940s is still true today. People living with serious mental illness end up isolated and alone within the larger community. There are few places where they can go for support and be accepted as people, not patients. Once they're diagnosed, their lives become all about their illness. We at Fountain House have learned to focus on that which is healthy in the person. Everyone needs a community in order to survive in the world, but people living with mental illness have a very hard time finding their place. We created our working community to answer that need. At Fountain House, our intention is to improve the lives of people living with schizophrenia, bipolar disease, and depression. Serious mental illness disrupts lives. People lose their jobs, they drop out of school, they alienate their family and friends, and they end up alone. Our working community builds the support and offers the opportunities for members to go to work and school, to find places to live, and to develop a network of friends. We are a local working community with a global reach. There are 400 places around the world that are modeled on the Fountain House approach. But we want to inspire more people to do this work. People with mental illness everywhere are isolated. They need a Fountain House model working community. We have been training people to develop these communities since the 1970s, but we wish to expand that capacity. We want to take our training program beyond our doors and we have begun to create training modules that can be adapted to regional networks. We'd particularly like to develop training programs in languages other than English. Although there are Fountain House model programs in more than 30 countries, the curriculum only exists in three languages, and the vast majority of training is conducted in English. We also want to better use the training section of our website and social media channels to support our international community. These tools will enhance the discussion and flow of ideas over distance and time. Our evidence-based, cost-effective approach is particularly relevant as governments seek to manage health care costs. Health care, including behavioral health, is undergoing a major change and it's possible that once again, the government will shortchange people with serious mental illness. People with schizophrenia, bipolar disease, and depression need three things to recover. Good psychiatric care, which includes proper medication, good medical care, and social service. In most cases, these three elements are completely disconnected, and at this moment, neither the state nor the federal governments have a plan for funding the social service or community support that is needed. Our partnership with the Sydney Bear Center, an integrated psychiatric and medical care center, uniquely positions us to offer all three services bundled together in a welcoming place where people want to come, in the context of a community people want to be a part of. Treatment at the Bear Center is truly integrative. It affords members the luxury of having their psychiatric and medical care and records in one location and it relies on a team-based approach that includes staff workers and other key relationships. The member is the leader of this team and chooses whom they would like to include in their appointments and meetings. The therapy of Fountain House is our working community. Everything we do from building maintenance to developing our programs to policy decision making is done by members and staff working in partnership. Our activities and programs are designed to provide opportunities and, at the same time, produce the desire and the confidence for members to pursue them. For all of this to happen, you must have a place, a place where people come together and build the support to take those first steps back into the larger community. 
a place where people feel needed, where they can contribute their talents and learn new skills. It may be a place that they just pass through on their way to achieving their goals, but they need it nonetheless. We take great pride in being a well-managed business. For the last 10 years, Fountain House has balanced its budget and put a surplus away towards future capital needs. We have an extremely dedicated and hands-on board of directors who are not only invested in the issue of mental health, but very dedicated to maintaining exemplary governance practices at Fountain House. We're very proud that the federal government has recently recognized us as evidence-based, meaning that substantial research shows our approach to be effective. The average national completion rate for students with mental illness is 32%. For participants in our education program, it's 77%. Every semester, we support more than 100 college students. The average employment rate for people with mental illness is only 15%. For participants in our employment program, it's 65%. And every day, more than 300 members volunteer their time to come to Fountain House to support and build our community. The Fountain House model has been replicated in hundreds of locations in more than 30 countries and 32 states and currently serves more than 55,000 people with mental illness worldwide. We take great pride in being a well-managed business. For the last 10 years, Fountain House has balanced its budget and put a surplus away towards future capital needs. This practice enabled us to replace our 40-year-old heating and cooling system, which cost over $4 million. Fountain House has a 477-acre farm in High Point, New Jersey where the members and staff of Fountain House go weekly to help in the work. We grow organic fruits and vegetables to feed our community in New York City. We've been awarded a prize as the best tree farm in the state. We've been raising alpacas for the past 15 years, and we have a few llamas. But we have one very special llama. His name is Kissing Al. When you walk up to him, he comes very close to your face, and the kiss is up to you. As we say, it's all about relationships. We also have a cooperative gallery run by over 40 artists recovering from mental illness. The gallery is over 10 years old. It sold hundreds of artworks and has been recognized with a grant from the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs. Fountain House has been an innovator and a disseminator of its approach for over 60 years. Fountain House was helping people with mental illness go back to work in the 1950s. We were helping people live in their own apartments in the same decade. We helped innovate the idea that people with mental illness could live independently successfully. Fountain House has been training people from around the world to replicate our approach since the 1970s. There are 400 places modeled on the work of Fountain House from California to Argentina, from Uganda to China, from Sweden to Ohio. A new working community in Bangladesh was inspired by an interaction right here on 9th Avenue in New York City. It turns out our local pizza man, who hails from Bangladesh, is quite an entrepreneur. After he got to know some of our members and staff, he was so excited about Fountain House and so grieved by the lack of mental health services in his home country that he started the first working community in Bangladesh with plans to open many more. In spite of the fact that we're known as a pioneer in this field and that we've existed for 60 plus years, we still struggle with operational funding for Fountain House. Research shows that for people with serious mental illness to recover successfully, they need good medical care, good psychiatric care, and good community support services. However, community support never seems to get adequate funding. In this time of shrinking government funding, a new minimalist managed care approach is being promoted. This short-sightedness will once again leave people with serious mental illness to fend for themselves. The second biggest challenge is finding jobs, 
employment for our members. People with mental illness still have an unemployment rate of 85% nationally. Between partnering with corporations to offer supported employment positions and our new social cooperatives initiative, we have developed methods that help get people with mental illness to work, but there's a lot more work to be done in that area. We need additional funds to help create more Fountain House type programs in the U.S. and throughout the world. We're evolving new techniques to accelerate the pace of replication. We've written a book to be published by Columbia University Press that details our approach and techniques, and we intend to publish more. We want to expand our training program to educate more social practitioners, executive directors, and board members who understand the importance of this work and want to work with people who have serious mental illness. We could use funding for that because there really isn't any government funding for that particular aspect. Additional funds would also be used like a seed grant to help support the growth of other programs modeled after Fountain House around the world. It has been our history to lead on the issues that people living with serious mental illness face. We now have to show the government social planners that if you provide good community support services with good psychiatric care, you save money and you have better outcomes. The recognition that everyone needs a place where they feel they belong and where they can return is lost in the current mental health planning. If we can successfully build stronger and better places like Fountain House in many more cities and towns, we'll fill a tremendous need for all the people living alone with mental illness.